A journey in time. The ancient Illyrians in 21 century. This is a window of the past, where you can see the ancient people living in nowadays. This short documentary is made by Endrit Kadriyu. Once upon a time, in this fruitful land, the eagles flied free, and everyone lived in harmony. This land was ruled by a nation that lived here since the first signs of humanity, and they were called the Pelasgians. Pelasgians are one of the most antique nations in the whole world, and they were located in southeast Europe, today's Balkans. Later. The Pelasgians were divided in different tribes, but still kept the same culture, language and beliefs. Since they were in tribes, the conflicts between tribes became often, and the harmony between people was lost. These tribes later were called the Illyrians, and there were over 70 Illyrian tribes. Illyrians used to rule the Mediterranean Sea, the Balkans, and even more. Illyrian kings and their armies got even to Far East, and leaving signs even today, such as the ancient Macedonians, the Illyrian tribe that used to live in southern Balkans. By the year of 336 BC, there was a new leader born in ancient Macedonia. He was called Alexander the Great. Alexander was the son of Philip II, and his wife Olympia, the daughter of Neoptimus I, king of Epirus. When Alexander was 13, Philip chose Aristotle as Alexander's teacher. Moreover Alexander was proclaimed king by the nobles and army at the age of 20. Since Alexander took the power of Macedonia, he started the first campaign invasion of the Balkans. Then Alexander conquered Persia, and started the Indian invasion campaign, where he was forced to retreat. By the end of his reign, Alexander conquered most of world's known territory by then, and Illyrians or ancient Macedonians ruled these territories for few years and after losing the power historians think that most of the Illyrians retreated to Balkans or got killed by the locals. Most of the others that left alive probably got assimilated. At the Central Asia, respectively today's Afghanistan and Pakistan region, there are few very interesting tribes that are fascinating the science. These tribes live in Hansa Valley and suburb, and the interesting part about them is that they are pure white-skinned, totally different from the local nations. These tribes also speak different language, have different culture and different beliefs from the local people. There have been many researches about these tribes, to discover their identity, and their origins. The conclusions are that they are Indo-European people that speak the Dardic language, part of Indo-European languages tree. Also these tribes people's genes, are more similar with the Balkan nation's genes, than the other local nation's genes. Due to these studies, these are denizen tribes, that today have almost half million citizens. 
There are three tribes that live around Hansa Valley, and they are the Burush people, who have around 87,000 citizens, the Kalash people, who have around 6,000 citizens, and the Pamirian people that have around 350,000 citizens. These white tribes are now partly blended with the locals, and probably have more than 2,000 years that they have been living there. So these people's culture seems like it had a fusion with the locals' culture. Obviously, they needed to survive, and to adjust the circumstances. These white tribes have the same culture, and the same identity, but there are few differences between them, because of the different local nations that they are blended with. The local nations are dark-skinned, and have much more different culture than these white tribes. They have different language, different beliefs and traditions. At the other side the elders at the white tribes pretend that they are the direct descendants of Alexander the Great, and his army. Seems like not all of Alexander the Great soldiers got retreated, assimilated or killed. The old man is saying that Alexander the Great soldiers stayed here, and married local women. We are the direct descendants of them. However cultures of these tribes, have been blended with the local culture, but still keep its identity, and its difference. The music, traditional wear, fairy tales, symbols, beliefs and even the mythology of these tribes tell us their origin. It is very interesting to see these people's culture, it is such similar with Illyrian or ancient Macedonian culture. The music the traditional wear, the symbols and much more, tells us that they are the descendants of Alexander the Great's army for real, as the elders tell. of the Burush people, the Kalash people, and the Pamirian people, still keeps some words that are similar only with the Albanian language, the ethnic descendants of the Illyrians, at the Balkans. The names of the tribes themselves, tells us about them, in Albanian language. Let's take for an example the tribe of Burush, or also known as Burush. This tribe's people are known as fighters, and unquestionably man's of their word. If we look at the burush as a word, and take the suffix of the word, we got burg or bur, which in Albanian means, a man, and in Albanian lands, a real man always keeps his word, it is also a divine virtue, or by other words, it is busa. This is written in Albanian laws, known as canon laws. The Kalash people that live in Hunza high mountains, where have been found many antique castles and forts, that result that they are two thousands of years old, and younger. At these castles, there have been founded many paintings of horses, and many symbols which are the same as the Illyrian symbols. Besides if we look at Kalash as a word, 
In Albanian language the word Kala or Kala means castle or castles, and the word Kalas means horsemen. If we look at the Pamirian people, they were settled at the most panoramic views of the region. If we now look at the word Pamirian, or Pamir without the suffix, in Albanian language the word Pamir means nice view, or to have a nice view. But, may this be a coincidence? Furthermore, there have been many different facts that linked these white tribes with the ancient Macedonians, that were an Illyrian tribe, and of course, it is unquestionable that Albanians are the autochthon descendants of Illyrians. History may be accurate, but archaeology is precise, Doug Scott quotation. That is so true, and indeed the archaeological evidences show us that the Hunza people are the descendants of Alexander the Great. The sun symbol, the snake symbol, and the horn goat symbol, are the basic decorations of the antique archaeological findings in Hansa Valley, and they were sculptured in the same identical way as the ancient Macedonians used to. These symbols were not only common symbols for the Illyrians, these symbols were divine for all the Illyrian tribes. It worths to mention that these symbols have been submitted in history even later, for example the horned goat was the main decoration of the metallic helmet that was dressed in gold, and was wearing by the Albanians King Chigaj Kastriati, Skandavag. After Skanderbag's death, a writer named Maran Barlatai says, when the people saw all those young and brave men around Skanderbeg, then it was not hard to believe that the armies of Sultan Murat were so defeated by the Albanians. Indeed, the times when the star of Macedon shone brilliantly had returned, just as they seemed in those long-forgotten times of Pius and Alexander. This was written around the year 1450 C, and shows us the blood relationship between the ancient Macedonian Illyrians, and the Albanians, among many other facts. 